Hello and welcome to this lesson. And in this section that we are starting right now, we'll be talking about the Scrum roles and the Scrum team. The Scrum framework is revolutionizing the classic triangle of project management. Now, in the past, organizations were forced to sacrifice one of three major things, budget, time, or quality. However, with the Scrum framework in place, a new triangle is emerging between budget, time, and functionality. And none of the elements have to be compromised for the project to be completed as a success, okay? And when we talk about the Scrum framework, the quality is no longer optional in this case. The Scrum teams try their best to provide the best possible software for their clients in order to help them and their businesses succeed. Now in this, the definition of done, the DOD, is used to determine when a feature is complete and meets the required quality standards. DODs specify the desired outcome in terms of functional and non-functional requirements, the designing, the coding, the unit testing, and user verification, for example, documentations, and more. DODs are defined at both levels of uh, user stories and tasks. Now, user story DODs focus on functional and non-functional client requirements, while task DODs focus on the desired working activities of the Scrum team members. The Scrum team is not permitted to close out any tasks that do not fulfill the DODs. The Scrum product owner and the Scrum team defines tasks additionally throughout the software development process. This accrual development allows the team to remain dynamic and adjust their next best actions in a monitored manner without really incurring additional costs and risks. The Scrum team builds a transferable software product accrual until the end of each sprint. Then the team demonstrates and discusses these accruals with the Scrum product owner, meaning the client, and the client stakeholders to get their views and add them to the next steps of the sprint. Flexibility is not only applied to the software delivery, but also to operational processes. The Scrum framework allows more efficient use of resources, be it human, time, budget, materials, and the minimization of waste as well. Studies have shown that the Scrum has positive effects in practice, such as improved team collaboration, increased productivity, better quality, flexibility, and increased customer satisfaction. While introducing and adopting the Scrum framework may be difficult in the beginning, the flexible and iterative approach of the Scrum framework handles the initial burden and copes better with ever-changing client and business requirements. In most cases, the Scrum Framework is a better alternative to the classical software engineering methodologies. To sum it up, the Scrum Framework has transformed the traditional triangle of project management by prioritizing what was really important, quality, and creating a new triangle between budget, time, and functionality. This framework offers flexibility and optimization of resources and has shown positive effects in practice. While it may be challenging to adapt, the Scrum framework is often a better alternative to all the other traditional software engineering processes. Hello and welcome to this module on Scrum roles and the Agile Scrum team. The Scrum framework identifies three key roles, the product owner, the Scrum team member, and the Scrum Master. Now, a successful Scrum organization needs individuals with, with all these skill sets. These roles are indispensable, not replaceable, and should not be combined with other Scrum roles or functions. Each Scrum product owner typically works with one Scrum team, and each Scrum team has its own Scrum Master, who works exclusively with that team. Now, understanding and employing these roles with the right talent is crucial. Often the root cause of a Scrum team's difficulties is either the lack of understanding of these roles or not employing the right people. Now, each role has a defined set of responsibilities. 
And only by fulfilling these responsibilities and interacting and collaborating and working together on a Scrum project can a Scrum project be completed successfully. Now, the Scrum teams are responsible for delivering all work to business clients. The Scrum team is a group of individuals collaborating to provide the requested and committed product increments. To work effectively, everyone within the team must do the following. Embrace the Scrum framework values, such as courage, focus, commitment, respect, and openness. They must follow the same norms and rules. Pursue a common goal that connects them to the IT and business outcomes. Setting up a new Scrum team requires understanding that it will not perform at its best immediately. It's not just switch on and off. The team must go through the Tuckman model stages, which are forming, storming, norming, and performing. The Scrum teams have some specific features. They share norms and rules. They have a collective accountability for delivery of the product. They empower each other. They have autonomy. They are self-organizing. They have a balanced skill set. And they have a small core team with no sub-teams. They have full dedication to their teams. And they have co-location. They are ideally located in one place. Now, there are some rules and norms that the teams go through. Scrum teams must adhere to certain norms and rules, either implicitly or explicitly. Some of these examples may be like Scrum ritual details, the clear definitions of done duties, prioritizing and estimating guidelines, and uh, documentation practices, tool usages, even coding standards, and testing and quality assurance practices. There may also be some rules for that. Uh, there may be bug resolution processes, uh, change request handlings, sprint review meeting preparations, even scrum ritual or event outcome handlings, uh, meaning they should be following some rules in that as well. Backlog refinement meetings. These are things we will be discussing in detail for sure, but these are norms and rules that the team has to follow. Along with this, there has to be accountability. Now, the Scrum team as a whole takes full responsibility for completing the agreed upon user stories within the set time frame and highest possible quality as well. They must deliver that. The outcome, whether positive or negative, is always considered a result of the entire team's collaborative effort. So there's not one person responsible. The whole team is accountable. Also, there is empowerment and self-organization at the core of these teams. The Scrum team must have the authority to determine the following. The deliverables at the end of each sprint or duration of the work. The process of breaking down user stories into tasks. The assignments of specific tasks and their implementation sequences. Now, these are what the team has to do together. So the self-organization element comes in there. Now, by empowering the Scrum team to make decisions, the team members are more likely to be more productive and motivated in trying to serve the client's needs because they feel more inclusive. Along with it, they have a balanced skill set. Now, what do we mean by that? While each Scrum team member may have unique skills and abilities, focus areas and personal interests, but the team must possess a well-rounded set of skills to achieve maximum performance if they have to deliver a certain software. Now, this balance allows the team to tackle changing IT and business challenges and also help them to operate autonomously as much as possible. So a balanced team with skill set is really essential. The Scrum team must also be composed of diverse roles. Maybe it will be designers, developers, uh, architects, and more. And we must encourage team members to learn from one another's expertise as well. All members share the title of the Scrum team member, regardless of their primary skill sets. So a designer or a coder is still the Scrum team member. The Scrum team sizes are also typically small. And ideally, give and take a two from seven. So it could be five, nine. But typically, any more than this, an increased number of communication and alignment overheads come in then. However, the optimal 
uh, team sizes may vary for you depending upon how you experiment and how your team adapts but a five or a seven or a nine is a is a suitable number for your scrum team another important feature was that you need to reduce the communication overheads when teams are collaborating. It is ideal that they must be located together. If they are in multiple geographical locations, they must be separate team members, separate scrum teams that I must say, and they have their, their own goals and user stories so that the collaboration within that area is easy. The scrum team has distinct responsibilities, including number one, dissecting the user stories creating tasks, determining priorities and estimates, and organizing these task implementations, which involves crafting, managing, delivering the sprint backlogs. They also have the responsibility of holding daily scrum meetings. Along with this, the scrum team must have daily scrum meetings. They must ensure that a potentially releasable product increment is produced and showcased at the end of the sprint as well. Along with it, updating task statuses and remaining workloads, enabling the sprint burn down diagrams creations. Along with that, they must also be updating task statuses and remaining workloads, which helps them enable the sprint burn down diagram creation as well. We will also be looking into the details of how you use these diagrams in the later part of this course. But mastering Scrum, can be a daunting task, but fear not. All the resources are designed to assist and guide you throughout the process. So as we go along this course, you're going to get better and better at understanding the core and how to apply the Scrum framework for making it an efficient part of your organization. Thank you for watching this episode. Hello and welcome to this module on the Scrum Master Role. Now the Scrum Master is crucial in helping all participants of the Scrum project and also helping external stakeholders understand and apply the Scrum framework correctly. Their primary responsibilities include facilitating the Scrum process as a whole, fostering a new mindset and approach, and acting as an agent of change to develop new team norms and standards. Now, there are some key tasks of Scrum Masters. Number one, implementing the Scrum framework within their business and software development. Number two, acting as a change agent and supporting process adaptations to enhance the Scrum team's productivity. Number three, coaching the Scrum team to embrace the Scrum values. Also ensuring collective collaboration between product owner and the Scrum team. Also, they help in ensuring effective collaboration between product owner and the Scrum team. In addition, they help in resolving obstacles that impact work continually. Also leading work progress through service. They also help in facilitating Scrum events and protecting the Scrum team from external disruptions during a sprint. Now to perform these tasks effectively, a Scrum master should have excellent moderation and coaching skills. And not only that, he should be committed to continuous learning and inspiring others to grow. The Scrum Master is part of the Scrum team and takes on a more of a servant leader role. Initially, their primary focus will be moderation and coaching. But as the team progresses, they can contribute to sprint goals directly as well. Building trust between the Scrum Master and Scrum team members is essential. Ideally, the Scrum team should choose its own Scrum Master, but often it's the management that makes this decision. It is crucial for the Scrum Master to not have line management responsibilities over the team members so that you can maintain an open communication and joint ownership of work and decision making. Guarding the Scrum team and removing obstacles is a vital responsibility of the Scrum Master. He has to protect the team from distractions and added unplanned work during a certain sprint so that they can be very productive. Now the Scrum Master ensures that new user stories are stored in the product backlog until the next sprint planning meeting. 
They also will help remove impediments that hinder the team's progress, such as um, providing resources or finding missing know-how. Now, the Scrum Master facilitates the Scrum retrospective meeting, focusing on addressing identified shortcomings and measuring change. Now, facilitation of Scrum events is done by the Scrum Master, who is responsible for organizing and facilitating several Scrum events, including the backlog refinement meetings, the sprint planning meetings, the daily Scrum meetings, the sprint review meetings, and the sprint retrospective meetings. These were the roles of the Scrum Master, and in the next episode, we are going to learn more about the roles and the responsibilities of the product owner. So see you in the next episode. Hello and welcome to this module. And we are learning about the role of the Scrum product owner in this module right now. So the Scrum product owner is a pivotal role within the Scrum framework. And it helps by combining aspects of product and project management while also being deeply involved in the software development and delivery process. This role goes beyond traditional project, program, or product management roles and represents the end customers and stakeholders. The Scrum product owner is responsible for maximizing the value of the product by ensuring that the Scrum team delivers the right work at the right time. The key tasks of a Scrum product owner include, number one, Managing and clarifying project requirements. Number two, guiding releases and ensuring return on investment, which is ROI. Number three, collaborating closely with the Scrum team to deliver work on time. Next, managing stakeholders and their expectations. And also overseeing the Scrum product backlog. While the Scrum product owner can delegate some activities, they still maintain the accountability for their tasks. The Scrum product owner is responsible for the Scrum product backlog contents, which includes creating, maintaining, and clearly describing user stories, prioritizing user stories to achieve business goals and fulfill the software product's mission, ensuring the Scrum team accurately understands and implements user stories. The Scrum product owner is accountable for achieving product goals, creating and maintaining the release plan, and making decisions about deliveries and user functions and their order. They often manage the Scrum team's costs and budget, working with team members to refine, prioritize, and estimate user stories. Not only this, they also manage external stakeholders. Now, these external stakeholders should not directly communicate their demands to the Scrum team. Instead, the Scrum product owner collects and assesses required functionalities with stakeholders, combining, filtering, and initially prioritizing user stories before discussing them with the Scrum team. Collaborating with the Scrum team for a successful project is the core function of the Scrum product owner. He helps to communicate Scrum teams and work with them closely. The Scrum product owner is responsible for ensuring that the team members are informed and aligned with the goals of the software being built. During sprint review meetings, the Scrum product owner is the one who inspects, accepts, or declines the Scrum team's deliverables. Now, this brings us to the end of this lesson in which we've discussed about the roles and responsibilities of the Scrum product owner. In the next one, we'll be seeing you with more details about the Scrum team member. Thank you for watching. Hello and welcome to this module on the role of the Scrum team members. Now, the Scrum team members are the ones responsible for implementing the software. Together, they determine the number of requirements they can confidently deliver during a specific product increment known as a sprint. A high-performing Scrum team typically possesses a diverse range of software engineering skills. This includes software developers, architects, testers, database administrators, and other team members who are working collaboratively on the project. In a Scrum environment, 
Team members are no longer part of functional silos within a matrix organization. The developers are no longer solely part of software development competence centers. And testers don't exclusively belong to software testing competence centers only, and so forth. Hence, regardless of their previous positions within the organization, members of the Scrum team now belong to their specific Scrum project. Their primary objective is to create the best possible software to fulfill the requirements of their Scrum product owner. The key characteristics of the Scrum team includes number one, empowerment and autonomy, cross-functionality, self-organization and small size, full-time engagement, co-located workspaces, a united and collaborative mindset. It is crucial to remember that the Scrum team members consistently adhere to the Scrum values, which are number one, courage, two, focus, number three, commitment, number four, respect, and number five, openness. Now this sums up the role of the Scrum team members. And in the next episode, we are going to look at a very important question, and that is, do we still need a project manager in the Scrum framework? We'll be addressing that question in the next module. Thank you for watching. Hello and welcome to this module. And we are looking at if we still need a product manager with all the other roles in place. Now, a product manager usually defines the requirements and delegates their execution to a project manager, who then coordinates all the necessary activities to deliver the project requirements. However, the Scrum framework does not include a project manager role in the traditional sense. Instead, the tasks associated with this role are distributed between the Scrum product owner and the Scrum master. Decision-making about functionality, release planning, and budgeting becomes more streamlined, efficient, and effective when one person handles the execution, control, and documentation of these activities. Otherwise, constant tension may exist between the Scrum product owner, who's not responsible for the project, and the project manager, who's not responsible for executing the work. The Scrum framework, hence, aims to prevent this potential conflict, which could impact the functional and tactical management of the Scrum team's work. As a result, the responsibilities typically associated with project managers and product managers are now combined into the Scrum product owner role. However, the Scrum master assumes some traditional project manager uh, responsibilities as well, such as tracking tasks in sprints and facilitating the resolution of impediments. Since the Scrum master is part of the Scrum team, Handling such activities directly within the team becomes more efficient and straightforward. And this answers the question that we do not need a separate standalone project manager when we have the Scrum framework in place. Now, this brings us to the end of this section. Do practice the exercises and quizzes. And in the next section, we will be discussing about the Scrum stories, estimation, and DODs in detail. So see you there. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.